good morning to you trust you well today welcome back for your bite-sized word today i'm going to share something i've got two scriptures that i have spoken about online and i've spoken about it at in-person meetings but i just feel like god is reminding me of this all the time and maybe it's something to end the year off with with an expectation to go into the new year acts chapter 3 the story of peter and john going past the gate beautiful um, when Peter stops and says to the, the lame man who has been lame since birth, so he was 40 when he got healed. And now Peter stopped and said to him, so in verse 6 of Acts chapter 3, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And the guy was healed. But... The translation of the name of that gate, the gate, the gate beautiful. One of the translations, if I remember correctly, is the right time or the right hour. And I'm feeling that we, we are finding ourselves approaching or maybe even in, I think in, the right time or the right hour for God to be releasing his miracles, his breakthrough, his solutions, his answers through people of the kingdom who've been prepared and called for such a time as this. And Peter and John had, they weren't just going to pray, you know, as, well, it was a regular thing that they obviously did. They would go to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. But I believe that Peter, let, Peter was the one who said it. So let's stick with Peter. When he said, what I do have, I give you. He knew that he had something in his life that would change the life of this guy who had begged for decades outside this, this gate. And he knew that what he carried was an atmosphere of revival, the power and the presence of God. He had learned from Jesus. He had had his amazing, his miraculous turnaround. And now Peter was the guy who got up in the upper room and he began to preach and thousands were saved and so he knew he was carrying this is that spoken by the prophet joel and so today let's go to the book let's go into book the book of acts chapter one where jesus says this um it's verse eight but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you a promise from Jesus, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And then Jesus ascended to heaven. After that promise, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me. So Peter and John had heard that. They had been in the upper room. They had seen God pour out his Spirit. And they had seen, heard the languages spoken, they, things changed that day. And so when Peter said to the man begging for arms, A-L-M-S, not arms, he needed legs. He was begging for money, begging for help because that was his lifestyle. And Peter was able to say, because of where he had come from, I don't have the things that you think that you need, the silver and gold, the money. But what I do have, I give to you. And it's what he had, that atmosphere of revival, that faith in, in the miraculous, because he had seen it, is what changed the life of, of the lame man at the gate beautiful, at the right time, in the right hour. And so if you and I are aware of what God is doing in our lives, if we lift our eyes a little bit higher to get out of our circumstances, our need for breakthrough, our, our sense of frustration and desperation because we still find ourselves in the same circumstances as we did maybe a year ago. But if we recognize that God is doing something different in the realm of the Spirit and He's stirring His people to pray because He wants us to be people who live with an awareness of His presence and also who live with an awareness of this is that spoken by the prophet Joel. You know, when Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses. The word witness, if you think of a trial, a court case, they call a witness to give evidence and they call a wit evidence of what they have seen or, or uh, what they've seen. 
not just hearsay, it's what they have seen. You cannot be a witness if you just heard what someone else has said and get up on the stand in a, in a trial and say, this is what so-and-so said. You had to have witnessed it firsthand in order to be a proper witness. It also means to give testimony. Now, the testimony that you carry in your life of what God has done, you already have some miracles. The fact that you are here today is a miracle. I'm serving God today. The fact that he did something in your heart and all the prayers that he's answered about your family and about your own life and about the ministry that you have, maybe. That is the witness of the evidence of God alive and well in your life today. And so when we carry that and we, we make that the testimony of our lives of who God is, then we are going to be those people who come across the people out there in the world who have every argument about does God exist, um, whatever, and they have all the answers up here in their heads, but deep down inside they're searching for something. You and I are called to be witnesses, to testify of the goodness of God. So whatever you do in life, wherever God has called you, that's your job. That's your full-time calling, to be witnesses. But it's so important that we experience that time in the presence of God where we can receive power in these days. We, it's the power of God in our lives that is going to make the difference. Not only in our own lives, but in the lives of people around us. The power of God in our lives. And that's how we're meant to walk. So what I feel God is saying is, it's the right hour, it's the right time, it's the right season for you and I to begin to expect the power of the Spirit to be flowing in our lives. So that's my encouragement for you today. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you soon again.